There, Theron told his crew to ship their oars and make a shelter for Clarejo and provide her with every comfort. He did this out of rapacity, not humanity, as a businessman rather than a, as a brigand. He himself hurried to town with two of his men. Then, since he did not judge it prudent to look for a buyer openly and have everyone talking about his business, he tried to make a quick sale privately, without intermediaries, but his property turned out to be hard to dispose of, because it was not within the reach of many people, or of just anyone. It needed somebody wealthy, some great man, and he was afraid to approach that kind of person. So, rather a long time passed until he could stand, and could stand the delay no longer. And when night came, unable to sleep, he said to himself, You're a fool, Theron. Look, you've left gold and silver behind in a lonely place for all those days now, as if you were the only brigand there was. Don't you know that there are other pirates sailing the sea as well? I'm afraid of our own band as well. They might desert us and sail off. Obviously, it wasn't paragons of virtue you picked. Who could be expected to be loyal to you? It was the wickedest rogues you knew. Oh well, he said, get some sleep now, since you must. But when day breaks, get to the ship quickly and throw the woman into the sea. She's no business being there, and she's just an embarrassment to you. And don't ever again take on a cargo you can't get rid of. When he fell asleep, he had a dream in which he saw a closed door, so he decided to wait for that day. In his random wanderings, he sat down in a workshop, his thoughts in utter turmoil. Just then a crowd of people was passing, free men and slaves, and among them was a man in the prime of life, wearing mourning and looking sad. Theron got up, man is naturally inquisitive, and asked one of the people attending him, who is that? I think you must be a stranger, the man replied, or come from a long way off if you don't recognize Dionysus. He is the wealthiest, noblest, and most cultured man in Ionia, and a friend of the great king. Why is he wearing mourning, then? His wife has died. He loved her. Theron was all the more eager to continue the conversation now that he had found a rich man of romantic disposition, so he did not yet let the man go, but asked him, What position do you hold with him? The other replied, I am comptroller of his household, and I also look after his infant daughter, who has lost her poor mother early in life. What is your name? Leonis. I've met you at just the right moment, Leonis, he said. I am a merchant, and I have just sailed in from Italy. That is why I know nothing about Ionia. A woman in Sybaris, the richest woman in her town, who had a very beautiful maid, was jealous of her and sold her. I bought her. Now you can have the benefit, whether you want to get yourself a nurse for the child, she's quite well educated, or whether you think it worthwhile doing your master a good turn. It is to your advantage for him to have a slave concubine, so that he won't bring in a stepmother for the girl in your charge, over your head. Leonis was glad to hear Theron's proposal, and said, Some god has delivered you to be my benefactor. Why, you are setting out before me in reality what I dreamed about. You must come to the house and be my friend and my guest from this very minute. As for deciding about the woman, a look at her will tell me whether she is fit for my master to possess, or just suitable for people like us. When they reached the house, Theron was surprised at its size and luxuriousness. It was, in fact, equipped to receive the king of Persia, and Leonis told him to wait while he attended his master first. Then he collected him and took him to his own quarters, which were very much those of a free man, and gave instructions to lay the table. Theron, a clever rogue, 
good at adapting himself to any situation, set about eating and made a bid for Leona's goodwill by drinking to him repeatedly, partly to demonstrate an open nature, but mainly to confirm their partnership. Meanwhile, they talked about the girl and a great deal. Theron kept lauding her character rather than her beauty. He knew that whereas that what cannot be seen needs recommendation, seeing is its own advocate. Let's be going, then, said Leonis, and you can show her to me. She isn't here, said Theron. We stayed outside the city because of the customs men. The ship is moored ten miles away. And he told them where. You are moored on our land, said Leonis. All the better. Fortune is already leading you to Dionysus. Let's go down to the estate then, and you can rest after your voyage. Our country house is near you, and it's luxuriously equipped. Theron was still more pleased. It would be easier to make the sale, he thought, if it were not in the marketplace, but somewhere quiet. Let's leave at dawn, he suggested. You go to your country house, and I'll go to our ship, and from there I'll bring the woman to you. They agreed on this, then they shook hands and parted. Both of them found the night long, one in his hurry to buy, the other in his hurry to sell. The next day, Leonis sailed along the coast to the country house and took money with him as well in order to take out an option with the seller. Theron appeared at the beach where his band was waiting for him anxiously and explained the business to them. Then he began to talk smoothly to Callerho. My dear, he said, at first I too wanted to take you back to your family, but an adverse wind sprang up, and I was prevented from doing so by sea. You know how carefully I have looked after you, and most important of all, we have respected your honor. Charias will get you back untouched. You will have escaped from your tomb as safe and sound as if it were your bedroom, thanks to us. Well, now we must take a quick trip to Lycia, but there is no need for you to... for you to... to for you to... to be put to hardship. There is no point in that, especially as you're a bad sailor. So what I'm going to do is leave you here in the care of reliable friends. On the return journey, I shall pick you up and subsequently take you very carefully, back very carefully to Syracuse. Take any of your things you want. We'll look after the rest for you. At this, Clara Ho, distressed as she was, laughed to herself, thinking him an absolute fool. She already knew she was being sold. But in her desire to get away from the pirates, she considered being sold a happier condition than her previous noble rank. Thank you, sir, she said, for your kindness to me. And, she added, may the gods grant all of you the rewards you deserve. But I think it would be bring bad luck if I made use of the funeral offerings. Take good care of everything for me. I am content with a little ring I wore even as a corpse. Then she veiled her head and said, Take me anywhere you like, Theron. Anywhere is better than the sea or the tomb. <laughs>